Okay, I think we are live. Let's see if we're really live. Are we really live this time? <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Hey, uh, everybody. <laughs> so let's try this again and see how we are going to do this. Hey, looky there. Well, for some reason, it's showing different on my page than I'm used to it showing. So forgive me where I'm having issues here. Um, and so, weird, weird, weird. Okay, don't let me distract you. You wanna share? We're gonna share to our pages real quick. And pardon me for the difficulties because I am not seeing it do things I'm used to seeing it do. You know, Facebook loves to do this to me. Have you noticed? Yes. <laughs> so this is the old video. This is not. No, just scroll down. Is it not showing? This is okay. okay. Mm. Was live. Was live. This is live. So that is new, and I don't know. I don't know what's what's real. <laughs> I don't know. Now we're messing our video up. Because we're trying to figure this out. <laughs> so well, the reality um, is it's here. That's showing live right there, 34 seconds. Okay, live. We are rolling. I'm gonna wave. <laughs> You'll see me wave. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, you guys. I am so excited to be joining you guys tonight. We have got a special day today that we want to share with you guys. And then we also have some different things that we just want to just share because it's been overview. It's been a minute since we've been on here. And we are so excited to kind of take a few minutes to just join you guys again. Yeah. And so you want to start with our special day? Well, I started <laughs> a minute ago, then we cut it off, and then let's start it all <laughs> over again. So let's go this way. Uh, today, which is the 28th of May, makes exactly two months that we said I do to one another. Yes. Which was exactly five months to the day that that the little post that you did that started this whole interaction between you and I about you're getting married. Yes. Okay. Now back so, up. We have to tell you all about that in well, case you missed it. <laughs> Some if, of you you, if you really want to hear the back story, most of you guys already know that Cindy posted a little joke on Facebook. Hey guys, I'm getting married. Save a date. That sparked the whole thing between her and I. We had just <laughs> become Facebook friends the day before. Mm -hmm. uh, I was stalking her on Facebook as her version of the story. That is my version of the story, you guys. And was stalking so me. I was stalking her. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my version is she was stalking me, but, you know, that's my version. I don't stalk. Yeah. Don't so, believe in that. So the reality <laughs> is is that it's been seven months from the date that we interacted on Facebook and then two months to the day that we said I do. So that literally means five months to the day we said I do, which in many regards is very quick. There are people who date for a couple of years. Too long, you guys. And I'm sorry. guys that <laughs> date and they, they experience the ups and downs and actually have their hands standing on the door, the exit door, ready mm. to get out because things ain't going the way they want them to go, the way that they feel like they go, that, that they should go. And believe you me, uh, I'm one of those guys, you know. <laughs> I've tried the dating scene. I've, I've tried the... To, to get over this thing, this fear of my fear of the fear of rejection and all of those things, and always stood with my hand on that exit door. Now, mind you, that most of those dating experiences really wasn't of God. God was not being <laughs> put first. Yeah. God was not being exalted because I think in my own heart, I was trying to find a comfortable place for myself that I felt like somebody would quote unquote see me. Mm. 
somebody would say, yes, I validate you, which is not what, what I needed. What I needed was is to be healed so that I could have an open heart to receive the love of the Father so that I can in turn give that love to the person that I was in relationship with. And if we truly understand love, that means we don't look for a return. I don't need you to validate me. I don't need you to do anything to make me feel better about myself. Right. You know, and so that is the difficult part of relationships that most of us struggle with. And I challenge anybody listening to really explore what agape love is. Read 1 Corinthians 13 and read what it is. Love is patient. He goes before he says that, he talks about, look, you can operate in spiritual gifts. You can speak in the gifts of tongues, the gifts, uh, the tongues of angels, the tongues of men. You can operate in spiritual gifts. You can operate in words of knowledge. You can have the gift of prophecy mm -hmm. and still right. not possess love. Right. He said that you can have faith to move mountains and still not have love. So the reality is, is that unless you understand and receive true love from the Father, it really makes being in relationship with one another very difficult. Right. And even having our hearts open to receiving that love, we have been challenged in this relationship to be able to act upon that love and not return to learned behaviors, old learned behaviors, which is a defensive behavior. Right. Which is a, uh, you're rejecting me behavior. Um, you don't see me behavior. And so we've had to really hash that out and walk that out. She beat me up, guys. Beat she, you up. Oh, well, you know, not really. Not physically. <laughs> I, I'm just joking. That's what it feels like at times mm. when you are not walking in love. Right. But you're walking in a self-awareness, a self-defense. You know, Adam and Eve, they were naked. They were not ashamed. And it wasn't until... They both, which I think is interesting, and you and I have talked about this. Yes. That yes. Eve took that fruit, and her eyes still were not open to see herself naked and to see Adam naked until Adam took that fruit with her. And I think that's an interesting concept there, and I really would love to study that out further and see how that works. But the reality is after they both partook, they entered into a place where there was self-awareness. They realized they were naked. When God questioned them, there was self-defense. There was self-justification. In other words, they became aware of themselves, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of what love is because love is not self-seeking. Right. And so when we realize that we get into a place where we are defending ourselves, when we are trying to justify our ways, then we realize that we are not allowing love, agape, to lead us in life. Yes. And I think this is a very huge lesson that we need to understand and learn how to walk in. Mm -hmm. Because I think it will eliminate the majority of arguments, uh, bitterness, hurtful, unforgiveness, all of those things that happen in relationships. The disconnect. The disconnect. You know, yeah. that that is to me one of the things that the Lord has been really teaching both of us 
is about the importance of coming together in oneness and connection. And, and that, di that disconnect, it's going to come. The opportunities for disconnect come, and much of it comes when we're not loving well, yes. when we're about ourselves more than we're about the other. And so these are some of the fun things that we've just been really, I mean, we've, we've been studying it for years. Yes. And, and it's easy when you study and you have this idea of things, but then putting it into action is just, it is powerful. It is also exactly where the rubber meets the road. And we're, we just, we're having fun with this most like, Every day, we've had a few times we haven't had so much fun with it. <laughs> we've had some times where I can tell, and I will confess for myself. I won't tell on you. I'll let you tell on yourself. <laughs> I will always tell on myself. <laughs> uh, where I have had to remove myself, practice what I feel like the Lord had shown me, and understanding when I begin down that road, of self-defense and not seeing you not understanding where you're at not mm -hmm. understanding where you're coming from that i have to remove myself out make an adjustment put myself into the throne room of grace mm -hmm. that i could allow the father to help me dissect what i'm seeing help me dissect what i'm feeling Help me dissect what I'm thinking. He says in the verses before that in Hebrews 4, I know the very thoughts and the intents of your heart. Right, right. So he said, come boldly into that throne room of grace. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a high priest that has not been touched with our infirmities, but was tempted, was tested in every point that we are, yet he was without sin. And one of the things that I teach about sin is it is a place that we get to, because when we say the word sin, we often think, well, uh, I better not look at that girl's butt that's walking down the street because I'm sinning. You know, I better not uh, look at this on the internet because I'm sinning. Uh, I, I better not lie. I better not steal something that doesn't belong to me, take something that belongs. We think along those lines. But I believe that the basis for sin is for us to take God and say, God, I don't need you yes. to help me filter what I'm doing here on earth. I've got this and I don't need you. So I enter into a place of processing my own thoughts, figuring out my own avenue, my own ways to overcome the trials in my life. When we see Jesus, he said, I will not say anything unless I've heard my father say it. I won't do anything unless I've seen my father do it. And he never made a decision on his own without allowing the father to direct, to di uh, direct his steps. And I think that is why the Bible says that he was without sin. He was without doing things his way. Because Satan in the beginning said, God, I can do this better than you, which was the original sin. Mm -hmm. I can do this better than you. I, can, I will assert my throne above yours. And, and he told God, I'm, I've got this. You don't, I'm, I'm going to do this better than you. And then he convinced Adam and Eve, says, you don't need to listen to what God says. God's just trying to keep you from. Mm -hmm. And so they disregarded the instructions that they received from God and decided to do things through their own reasoning. And I believe that's when sin entered into the world. It wasn't the fruit. It was making the decision to process their own way of understanding, their own reasoning. Woohoo! So, I don't even know where to add to that. What to add to that? That's such good stuff. Well, such I think good that, that really goes into what we've dealt with. Yes. Instead of us trying to dictate this ourselves. 
it is run into the Father. You know, it's kind of interesting because, you know, we were talking about that today is very, very special for us because this is our two-month marriage anniversary, our um, seventh month of relationship anniversary. Um, I was sharing with him. I kind of saw some of my memories in Facebook, and this was literally 10 years ago that I was packing up my home after a divorce um, was finalized, and um, in all of the feelings, like I could see some of the things I was processing that day of um, letting go of the past and walking into a new chapter. And little did I know what it was interesting, what I called it even in my post that I was sharing with Larry this morning. Um, I was calling that the season of just kind of feeling like I was coming out of Egypt and going through a wilderness, which is interesting because that's exactly how he described his journey was the season of a wilderness and that even God had given him and he gave me the words that um, he had promises. He had promises for us that there was a promised land, a promised person, a promised life that he was he was moving us into into that new space. And and so I thought it was very interesting that I looked and it happened to be on this day ten years ago. That that was what I was sitting there not knowing what all of this could look like, not knowing that this would be the the person that God had planned for me. That not knowing that the wilderness wanderings were not my forever, that that was not where I, God was going to leave me, and that he had a very, very good plan for me. If you read my post this morning, some of you may have seen it. If not, go back and check it out. Um, in my post, I talked about, you know, sometimes we go through these little things. We go through the big things. We go through things and we think, man, God, I don't know how you can turn this around and and make this a good, a good, like you say in your word, that I, he, he says in his word in Romans 8, 28, that he takes all these things for his children and he promises that he is going to, that he's going to turn it around for our good. Now, I didn't oh, say wow. convenient. Yes. I didn't say convenient. I didn't say easy. I didn't say fast. You know, I didn't even go and start this um, word of faith stuff of, you know, prosperity gospel for your rich or for your whatever that we might want for the situation to come to an end and for us to get to the other side. For us, it was kind of funny. We talked about this, and, and I think we even talked about it in some other videos. Um, one of my dear friends, um, Lori, gave me a word from God years ago. We were working together, and I think she saw the pain that I had gone through through the divorce and the uncertainty, the fears, the, um, it, the, the sorting out all of the pain and the heartache and the, all the feelings that a situation can bring us. Now, I'm not saying your situation that you may even be in today is this situation, and it has all of those feelings. But, you know, I do want to say to someone that's listening today that God hears and he sees and he is there and he is totally open to the emotions you feel. Amen. He, he records in Psalms a plethora of just about any emotion you could ever feel as a human being. It's recorded right there in the book of Psalms. And so we know that he is aware and he is the place we can safely go to with those emotions. And so I don't know what you're going through, but I can tell you the God that we serve, that we profess, our Lord and Savior is okay with our emotions. And he wants us to run to him as our good heavenly father and dare to just climb in his lap and let him hear all of those emotions. What Larry was talking about just a few moments ago is his place that he learned in his wilderness, that I learned in my wilderness, that, that I learned that I could run to the Father and I could pour everything out to him, that he was my safe place. And that relationship where I could learn that he was my Lord, my Savior, my Father, my God, that I would run to, not to a person as wonderful as my precious husband, 
Don't you love that? I, I love still that. love the sound of that every time I say it. But as wonderful as he is, the burden is too much to run to a person instead of the person of God. The God who is intimate, the God who is in covenant with us, he's a covenant God. That means anything that you face, he's the God who wants to be everything you need. And I got that during my wilderness. And when I got that, it's kind of interesting. We were talking this morning. We, I love our morning talks because yes, our morning true. talks, each of us are doing things, pursuing God. Sometimes we pursue God together. Sometimes we are thinking through things or studying different things. It just depends on what God has for our day that day. But this morning I was sharing about how, um, how, God, how God for me taught me that he was my God I could run to through whatever it was. Because I would run to my ex-husband, now ex-husband, and I set him up as an idol in my life. Now, there is something about that. I remember the day that God dealt with me and told me, Cindy, you're in spiritual adultery. You have got something between you and me that's blocking you, you, our relationship. Our relationship is adulterated. It's not by my design, Cindy. And, and as I was talking this morning with Larry, I said, it's kind of interesting to look and see that during that that wilderness time for me it was similar to the children of israel where god was getting egypt out of them but he also was doing something else he was getting idolatry out of them as you see them in the promised land you don't see them grappling with idolatry after that place and here's the thing that i feel like that god has said it's kind of been an interesting transition because i, I, I mentioned to you weeks ago that I thought it was interesting that God had literally everything on the altar. It was kind of like my Isaacs. I had like a bunch of Isaacs. Had my children, my husband, my ministry, ev everything, my vocation, all of these things that I felt like the Lord was saying, Cindy, bring it up this hill. I want you to bring it up this mountain and I want you to lay it on the altar. And I want you to know that there's some things you're not going to go back down the hill with. Mm. There's some things that are going to die. I may resurrect some, I may give a substitute for some others, but there may be some that it takes, and I do it a different way. Marriage is one thing he did a different way. He didn't do it immediately for me. I believe he wanted to get that idolatry out of me. He wanted to get that, that putting a person in between me and him because he knew my tendency. He had watched my, my sin, my pet sin, which was putting a person what they wanted, their will, their ways, their preferences, what they thought of me before what God did and what God wanted. You know, it's kind of interesting. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I've been working on my dissertation for my doctoral degree. It's my last final thing. All my coursework's over. I'm a candidate for graduation and we're working towards December. Thank you, Jesus. And um, it's been a long journey. Actually, pretty much almost the whole time I've been um, single, I have been in school. And so this is a um, coming to a conclusion of a chapter. But one thing's interesting, the passage that God has really been giving me so much focus on that is kind of the core thing that I believe is the answer to some of the issues of gender and um, women in leadership, the woman's purpose, design, her, um, her identity, relationships, mission and ministry, all of this, it goes back to Genesis. And what I think is interesting is like if we look at Genesis 1 and 2, and I'm not going to go there tonight, we'll do that, we'll do that in the near future. Y'all get ready. There's some good stuff there. But if we look at Genesis 3, where we're looking at the woman, and that after the fall, I believe God is speaking into her life. And he's saying, you know what? This desire thing that just got you right here in this situation where she was designed to be a protector, to be to circle about her husband, to be in his face when things were not exactly what they should be, to come dialoguing, hey, this is a danger. We have to stay away from this. Instead of doing that, her desire, what? She looked and said, ooh, this fruit. 
I de it, it's desirable for what? For knowing things that she should have just known walking with God. For not for not no also not knowing some things she never had to experience had she not stepped out in those places. And so it's interesting that in Genesis three we see this turnaround here after the fall where Eve is Eve here's some things from God. It's not a curse. I love if you guys want to really dig into these passages on a really good level that I I don't think I'll ever be able to surpass what I see with true six, three sixteen. It's um Joy Fleming, she did her dissertation on simply Genesis 3.16 and their writings, their teachings. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. But one of the things they say again and again in their podcasts and in their teachings, in their books, is that God did not curse Adam and Eve. That got my attention when I first heard it. Because I was like, yes, he did, didn't he? Until I went and read the, po the, the actual passage of scripture and saw he cursed the serpent and he cursed the ground. But he spoke the ramifications of sin for Adam and Eve so that they would see this was that he spoke that into their lives. Uh, not spoke it into their lives. He spoke it so they could be aware of this. That when a woman desires her husband, what? He's going to rule over her. He's going to he's going to set up his own preeminence instead of. Being like what I'm grateful my precious husband insisted on in my life, Cindy, it's time for us to go to the Father. We're going to do this separately, and then we'll come back together. I assure you, we're coming back together, but we are going to take a few moments for us to each seek God. And that is something I've never experienced ever before in relationships. Not like this kind of relationship, such an intimate relationship. And so, anyway, this has been just a fun season of seeing God do some things I could only dream of. I could only dream of having, uh, I, I remember as a little girl, my first dreams were of being a wife and a mother. I, 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 I dreamed of that because my mother was such a beautiful wife, such a beautiful mother. She still is such a beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful picture. Of, and a beautiful vision of what I am reaching for in godly womanhood. And I praise God for that. And that I remember dreaming of that. And imagine when my own dreams were shattered into pieces all around me. I had a, a friend of mine that we've been friends since right about the time of my divorce. Um, and I remember her speaking one of the first, I guess I knew it was a prophetic word over my life. Uh, there have been many others that had affirmed where I was going, what God was doing in my life, that gave me direction, that unpacked Bible to me. There were those along the way. But what I loved was that particular day, she described pretty much where I was. And she gave me a vision of what I needed to do during this past season. And um, what she said was, she said that when she looked into my eyes, she saw a brokenness. And it wasn't that I was broken because we know that in Christ we're not broke. And somebody might need to hear that tonight. You're not broke. You may be sitting in a lot of brokenness. You may be sitting apart from God's beautiful design for you and your life. But you're never so broke. You're not broken. And so I just want to put that, just put that there because I feel like mm -hmm. somebody needs to hear that. And if you need more on that, we can talk. But anyway... Yeah. But she said what she saw was brokenness, and she said it was like a big mirror that shattered into mi millions of pieces. And I was feverishly trying to pick up all the pieces, and boy, did that describe my life right then, didn't it? Oh, yeah. And she said, you don't even want to look down because it's like you're afraid of what you might see. And this was spoken over a girl that loved, loved God giving me a vision and me running towards it. And that love, being able to um, hear the voice of God and be obedient, stepping into it. But at that point, I wasn't hearing and I wasn't seeing very well. All I could feel was just God, like, pulling me in and just holding me. Just letting me see an intimacy I had never seen before. An intimacy in almost a silence. Not all silent. I'm, I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying here. But it wasn't a, a plethora of words. It was a 
pulling in and holding and sitting with me through the pain. And as I look back, it's kind of interesting. About a year ago, I remember thinking, oh man, I'm about to finish my doctoral degree. What God are you going to want to do in the next season? I kind of need to get a vision. And I could literally hear the Lord sitting back and I could almost hear his smile over me because I, I know that he had such a beautiful plan of just a, not even 12 months later, like nine, 10 months later, bringing this man into my life. And I remember in December, after he had a conversation with me, the Lord had a conversation with me and said, yes, Cindy, yes, this is it. This is what you stopped believing for. You stopped believing me. You stopped hoping. Your hope was deferred a little bit and you stopped hoping, you stopped believing, you stopped believing big. And the reason you haven't had the vision is because the vision isn't all about you. The vision is about you and him. It's a togetherness. It's a, it's a, a, a vision that you will join together and you'll run into this next season, this next chapter, this beautiful promised land together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's good stuff. You know, we've spent a lot of time talking about what this looks like. Mm -hmm. And I think that our vision from the beginning, when I sat in the car with you on December the 2nd, mm -hmm. and I knew that God has called us together, that, that I seen the signs, I, I, the, the fleeces that I threw out before God were answered. And I knew, and, and I said, hey, we're going to walk. And at that moment, God gave me a vision of what that was going to look like. We're walking on this path, going to the promised land, going. And it was like a, a scene, because I like to hike in the mountains. I love hiking in the woods. So for me, it was a vision of being in the woods, being in a place that I had started walking, that we had started walking before, you and I on other occasions. Right. But ended up veering off to the left, to the right, you know, uh, because we weren't totally listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And at this point in my life, God had been really hammering home to me today. When you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Mm -hmm. As in the day of provocation, the day that they were in the wilderness, the day that they were testing God, mm -hmm. yeah. the day that, that God was trying to take them to the promised land. Right. He said, don't harden your heart. Don't, don't begin to say, well, I've got the answers. Don't begin to say, I know how to do this. But be diligent, be quiet. Mm -hmm. to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit to walk this thing out. Right. And, you know, one of the things that has challenged me in my life is overcoming the area in my life where for the last couple of years that I have been surrendered to that singleness Mm -hmm. That I'm just going to be single, not really looking to date anyone, but become that uh, example of God's love, pouring love out into people's lives, helping friends uh, do moves, just moving, or finding someone that needs help, putting something together, helping someone do something that they need help with, not expecting a return. Mm -hmm. but literally practicing agape love. Well, that included in my life, even women. Mm -hmm. Because for me, dating was, what can I find for Larry Degree? <laughs> what can I find that will pacify me, that will bless me? And so I had to get to the place where I wasn't looking for anything from anybody. So I had a plethora Yep. <laughs> a, 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 a plethora, a harem, as she called it, as, as it is, of women who were holding to this man that loved God, maybe waiting for a chance to be seen, maybe waiting 
for a chance to be heard, maybe waiting for a chance to be noticed. And I wasn't doing anything wrong, per se, mm -hmm. other than being a man of God. However, as a married man, I could no longer have that harem, that following. <laughs> what a great and way so, to put it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. There's just no other way to really say this. So as Cindy would notice somebody coming and begin to walk in that way of saying, hey, can you help me? Hey, can you give me an ear? Hey, can you? I knew in my heart that I could no longer hold that place. Mm -hmm. But to cut somebody off that has been a part of my life was a difficult thing for me. But Cindy had to come along as my Azer Conigdo and allow me to hear her voice speaking to me and me saying, what is it that you're telling me? Instead of me reacting and going into a defense, I had to learn to hear what she was saying because God has brought this woman into my life. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you something. This was difficult for me. And let's pause really quick because we've had many conversations with other single men or single women yeah. where the battle that they had faced in past relationships was very similar. Yes. Like even the, I mean, the conflict of the marriage or the conflict um, with them being able to even step into serving God yeah. because the, there is a... The, Satan will use different things yes. to create whatever it can be, whether it can be a temptation. I think, and I've said this many times, it's interesting that in the list of qualifications of leaders in the Bible, ministers in the Bible, almost every one of the lists, it says something about, and usually at the top of the list, about sexual purity or abstaining from sexual immorality, which is a very interesting thing. Because if you think about this, there has to be a place where um, that it, there is that place where I know Larry carries such a sweet father's heart. This is something I spoke into you even when we were first talking to one another. I said, I can sense this. I can see the father's heart. You're like a visual picture, a vision of or, or an image bearer of God's heart. I can see that in him. Yet... Here he is, it's that, that place of what does this look like inside of a relationship? What does this look like inside a ministry? What does this look like inside of um, the church in particular? How do we do this and navigate this to where yes. we do this the way God wants this done yes. by his design? So. so, and that's really good because while we can see this from a perspective of the flesh, and we're, it's very easy for us to see it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. It's oftentimes very difficult for us to see that from the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. Because we're used to walking things out in the flesh. What we see, what we feel, right. what we think. You know, man's ways in his own eyes are always right. We have justified what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I was just being a good godly man. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I wasn't trying to get them in the bedroom. I wasn't trying to pursue them uh, in a in a in a panty ministry, you know. Uh, you Some know. of the things that are said on our lives are crazy. But so yeah. the reality <laughs> is that hey guys, listen. Hey, you're gonna get I've it. got a couple of buddies watching here, Joey and Steve. You guys have known me for years. Steve, thirty five plus years, Joey uh 27 28 years at least mm -hmm. so guys i know these guys these guys know me mm -hmm. they've seen the ups and downs they've seen uh before i was ever married steve you know and so you guys have seen these ups and downs in my life and so the trap is set mm -hmm. the trap is set but what cindy and i are having to learn how to do is how to walk in oneness mm -hmm. what we talked about leaving oh yes and cleaving mm -hmm. leaving what we have known behind us and cleaving together to walk forward in the place that god's calling us to because one of the things that we wanted to share with you guys tonight is what we believe 
God is calling us into. Mm -hmm. Learning how to walk in oneness. Right. So that we can teach others what that truly looks like. Right. Because we seem to have a very broken idea of relationships. Whether it comes from a complementarian um, mindset. Man is the leader. He's the Mufasa. Woman bow down and kiss my butt. You know? <laughs> And we may not take it to that extreme, but yet we have a Go twisted... Go to the kitchen and make a sandwich. Yeah, we, have, that a, we have a twisted <laughs> version yes. of what God designed for male and female from the beginning of time. And how does that look? Right. And so God, through Cindy and what she has been studying in her dissertation and in her years of learning... And what she's writing about, you know, to, to gain her doctorate's degree. And what God has done in me mm -hmm. outside of a college, just through life, through experiences. Mm -hmm. And believe me, there's a lot of experience. I've got, the, I've been to the school of hard knocks, guys. Yeah, he's got a triple I've, doctorate in that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, my daddy called me knothead most of my life. I wonder why, because I got a lot of them on my head from the school of hard knocks. Yes. Uh, yes. Steve, you can attest to that, brother. You know that I've been through some things I just saw and, some have, checks. And, and have learned the hard way, guys. <laughs> Joey, you could probably attest to some of that, too. Uh, mm -hmm. But you guys, I went through some very difficult times of learning the things that I know. But we believe that God is forming this ministry, mm -hmm. the degrees ministry. Yes. Returning to God's design and learning what that really looks like mm -hmm. so that as we go forward, we can begin to teach the truth about that. Right. right. Because even in this week, <laughs> even in the last month, we have experienced so many people that have shown forth brokenness. Yes. Somebody wanting to go this way, somebody wanting to go that way, while both of them out of their mouths are saying, God, we love you. And yet we see a separation. We see a division. Mm -hmm. We've seen brokenness. We've seen pastors, pastor in a church, who is separated, divorced from their wives and saying, hey, I'm trying to teach others. I'm trying to show others, yet he himself is struggling trying to figure relationships out. Right. And the whole uh, plan, the whole design, God's design, is for us to trust him. Yes. To be able to open our hearts to freely receive the love that he has for us so that we can image it so that we can reflect it this way right. horizontally right and if we examine this and we see brokenness here mm. we see struggles here yes it is a reflection guys mm -hmm. and we can teach more on this it is a reflection that there's some brokenness here amen that there's a flaw here, and we're not truly walking in that agape love. Mm -hmm. We're not walking in that design that God has for us. And this is not a hard word. It's really not. It's just hard when the nitty gritty happens. You know, we had a, a day that we were, I, we, we look at it now, we can examine. I'm saying something, he's hearing something else. He's saying something, I'm hearing something else. Why? Because we were not walking in love. Yeah. I mean, all it took was one of us to stop and walk in love. As a matter of fact, the minute that both of us, or one of us, both, actually both of us about the same time, mm -hmm. stopped and started walking in love, the, this, this disconnect. That the disconnect was no longer there. That that connection was back where it should be. And what to me was very interesting is, you know, in looking at that again, you know. If I'm, if I am at any point not hearing God 
or I'm running from God or I'm mad that God isn't getting him right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not going to be a pretty little sight. It's not. And the same thing with him. And, you know, one of the things that, that um, I'm just grateful for God coming along and saying, hey, you guys, you know, and I, and I told him this. God told me, he said, Cindy, you know, I actually turned on when he's pursuing God's heart. At that moment, God said, 1 Corinthians 13. And so I put it on. I was actually in my car going to work. And I put it on with the audio. And I listened to it about seven times. Kind of interesting and i said "Ooh, we both made a zero yeah. we both made a zero we failed we failed yep. this one we failed this and i told him whenever we we were able to speak i said we failed this we both failed and and this is the call to get back and let the father love us restore each of us and then immediately this was better this was yeah. better. Of course, we did reconcile. It's not like we just swept it under the under the carpet. But, but that's that's exactly what he's saying here. Getting that, that, um, that that what would you call it? That um, aware not awareness, but that revelation from God. Yes, is life changing because. Yes. The, the problem, you know, what, what, where, where does strife come from? Where, where does this Amen. come from? It comes from our flesh. It comes from our carnal desires. It comes from me wanting Cindy to be right more than me wanting to love Larry well. Yes. And, and, or Larry wanting to defend Larry so Cindy can see him instead of Larry loving Cindy well. There, that when we get in that place, it, it inevitably will have conflict that will not bring us into a oneness it will not bring us into a unity that is impossible it's like that with any other relationship we have as well try a church why do churches get all all messed up you're going to see because somewhere people are listening to you know wanting their way their will their idea, they're wanting to be heard, they're wanting to be put up on this space and this pedestal, this one's wanting it too, or whatever's going on. But that's all a carnal striving Amen. instead of, instead of each seeking the heart of the Father and seeking the love of the Father, seeking to for His love, to receive His love, and then uh, be that person that literally pours it out into the lives of those around. Yes. Amen. So, so we, truthfully, what it comes down to is not truly wanting to be seen here, but to truly exemplify the love of God. Yeah. Agape. Yeah. Because that's yeah. why we were created. We were mm -hmm. created in the image of God and in the likeness of God. And so our purpose in life is to reflect God, reflect agape, reflect love, you know? And so that is what we are looking to do. How do we occupy that place? Right. How do we deny ourselves, take up our cross daily? Deny mm -hmm. ourselves and take up our cross and walk after Him. Right. How do we do that? Right. How do we walk in the things that the cross has provided for us to walk in? That restoration, mm -hmm. the restoration of relationship. Sin has separated us from God. Doing things our way separated us from God. Jesus came and died mm -hmm. and took away the sins of the world. So that that relationship between us and the Father can be restored. Right. And so that we can now enter in boldly into that throne room of grace to obtain mercy, to find help in a time of need. Right. So, you know, that is what that's about. And so we are learning how that looks here in intimacy. Guys, I've run from this intimacy level. <laughs> I have run from it. Why? Because it exposes my fear. My greatest fear is rejection. Mm -hmm. And if she sees me, then she's going to reject me. But that's not true. Amen. It's true to an extent, 
But I do not need to be accepted because I am accepted in the beloved. I am fully accepted by God. I have received mm -hmm. the acceptance of the Father. So therefore, I no longer need this. This is great. I love this woman. She loves me well. I love her well. Yes. And these are great moments. They're hard moments, but they're great moments. They're, they're all hard. They're not all hard. <laughs> the hard ones are in the risk, the vulnerability. Oh, that I place see. of, okay, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to overcome this fear because I'm going to trust you with my heart. That's a tough, that's difficult. It is difficult. But, but watching what God does whenever we will just be vulnerable and open. One of the things, and I shared this in one of the past videos, but I'm going to keep you from having to go and just wade through them. Just do it anyway. But in one of the videos, I talked about how God, if you were to look at my heart like as a house, um, I had put the relationship ideas and all the mess ups, the broken pieces and all of that nicely in the basement. And I shut it off. I was even shutting it off from God. So when you're talking about receiving the Father's love, I had bolted that door shut. Like, sorry, God, we're not going to go there because you know what? You say that you'll give me the desires of my heart. I just don't want to go there. I just don't think I do that good. You heard that a few times. I don't, I told him early on, didn't even want to date because I don't do relationships good. And I mean, relationships that aren't vulnerable, yeah. that aren't that intimate, that aren't that real, that don't get into that spot and require me to go in and, or, or even let God in is really what it is. It's not about me, but letting me open the door. And God's knocking and saying, hey, I want in that room. Yeah. Cindy, you can trust me, can't you? You can trust me to get in there and clean this stuff out. There's stuff in there that's that's toxic. There's stuff in there that is broken. Cindy, I want you to be able to use the fullness of your heart. Your heart is a, it, it, I want your whole heart, and I want you to trust me with your whole heart. And, and so what is difficult is giving him full access to all of that. But what is the most rewarding is that if you can overcome those fears, if when I have overcome those fears of that and said, okay, Larry, this hurts, this spot hurts. This is what, this is where this is coming from. And I find that he doesn't run out the back door. <laughs> he, he doesn't, he's, he is fully, fully prepared, even though he doesn't always feel it. He's fully prepared for that. Yeah. Same with me. His fear of being rejected. And I just accepted him. I was willing to accept whatever. God had prepared that space. That, that, but then that coming together. You know, um, you mentioned it earlier. And I really want to tap into this. Because we know this. If we've been in the word. About leave and cleave and become one. This is about what it takes in the marriage covenant. The leaving, the cleaving, or, or being stuck together, um, and becoming one. We hear that in marriage vows and in marriage ceremonies. We hear it in some marriage teachings. But when you're talking about leaving, especially for us, it has been even leaving good things. It's been leaving definitely some of the bad stuff. It's been sitting and even unpacking some of the pieces that we would consider things we didn't want in a relationship that we've had to unpack and say, mm, I think this needs to be dusted off, cleaned up. We'll let the Heavenly Father do it. And this is going to be part of our message. Amen. This is going to be part of what we, yes. we let the Father bring yes. healing in this area. Yes. And it's the things that we've been most afraid of. The thing that, that literally I say was a part of broken relationships in the past for me. The reason I ran. Yep, come on. And the very things that were the reason for broken relationships for him and the reason he ran. And and God said, oh, no, no, no. We're not going to skip past this and we're not going to do it easy. Yeah, he won't, he won't let us walk <laughs> just. He's not letting us sweep it under the rug because mm -hmm. these are important and these are the hard things where God says, 
I need you to pay attention here. It's because he's trying to take us through an area that we need to be exposed. Oh, yeah. Because once he exposes it and we lift it up to him, guys, the word of God is so pure. It's not funny. Mm -hmm. But when he says perfect love casts out fear, first John Amen. 4 and 8, Woo. perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear mm -hmm. in love. Right. Can we testify of that? Can we say <laughs> that we knew how that worked? No, oh, I didn't. I but didn't God <laughs> was saying, he said, yeah. I want to show you how this works. Yes. I want to show you that as you open up your heart to receive agape, because that's what that word is. There is no fear in agape. Mm-hmm. Agape casts out fear. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want to show you how this scripture becomes alive. Mm -hmm. And so learning that, we have to say, no, we're not going to run from this. No, we're not going to sweep this under the rug. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is facing us. We are facing it. Yep. And we will walk through this together. Mm -hmm. And not allow to be defeated in this. Yeah, we yeah. will not allow ourselves to be defeated, but we will walk in this, allowing the Father to show us how to navigate this. This is where I believe Hebrews four talks about entering into the rest of God. This is a part of the book that I'm writing about entering <laughs> into the rest of God. And if we truly understand that, if we are in that rest. We allow the word of God to come in and divide the soul and the spirit. Yes. That is our thoughts, our mind, our will, our emotions from the spirit, which is truth. Yes. And it divides it. He said, everything's open. Everything's naked before the eyes of whom we have new with. He knows the very thoughts and the very intents of our hearts. So come boldly into the throne room of grace. Mm-hmm. Act like Jesus acted. <laughs> what? You want us to act like Jesus? He was perfect. I can't be perfect. Mm. Stop that. Stop buying into the lies of the devil. It has nothing to do, quote unquote, with being perfect. It has everything to do with walking in love and being perfected in love. Yeah. Come on. Colossians 3 says... Above all things, after you put off these things and you put on these things, above all, put on love. That is the glue, the bond of perfectedness. Mm -hmm. He tells us in James, he said, let patience have its works. Let it have its perfect way that you may be complete and perfect, wanting nothing. Patience. The very first thing that 1 Corinthians 13 says, love is what? Patience. Patient. <laughs> so let love be exercised, mm -hmm. and you'll find yourself in a place where you'll be complete. Yes. You'll be whole. Yes. And then you can walk in the way that Jesus magnified for us to walk, allowing the Father, becoming mm -hmm. one, knowing who God is. Mm -hmm. Read John 17. It's huge. Yes. So the reality is, is God is working us through this. God is walking us through this. I want to stop here and acknowledge just a couple of things. Yes, yes. Steve Horton, buddy, I love you, man. <laughs> Steve and I served together in the Air Force. He was probably one of the only adults that I ever really went to church with in my lifetime. I was a heathen, <laughs> and he, he enticed me to go to church with him. Wow. And so wow. a you. lot of experiences <laughs> there, but it still didn't click until later on. But Steve, I know you never gave up on me. You and mm -hmm. Dean, you guys shook your head and say, oh my God, I, Jesus, you need to do a miracle in that boy's life. But <laughs> we know you can, if anybody can. Steve, I love you, man. Steve and I reconnected after many years. Believe it or not, we seen each other face to face for the first time at my mama's memorial in oh. Ohio. He was literally like 15 minutes from where we held the memorial and he came and joined me and supported me in that time. Mm. Brother, I love you, man. I love you, dude. 
Joey Zena, I think you're still on here. I don't know if you are. I think you are. Joey, I love you, man. Joey and I worked together in Chattanooga when I first got into the alarm industry. That's uh, back in 1996 we started together, 96, 97. Mm. And Joey and I worked together. We've been friends ever since. Wow. And so, Joey, I love you, brother. Mm. Uh, anybody else out here I may be missing somebody, but I just wanted to recognize you two. Thank you guys for hanging with us. Mm -hmm. And, Steve, you will meet Miss Cindy soon. <laughs> So. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because I remember the day that I was really struggling with my stuff, mm -hmm. my stuff. And, um, you know, I had been able, really from a child, I think one of the, the ups and downs of my spiritual gifts is the that discernment and that ability. And, and, and when I look at what I'm called to be and called to do in the body of Christ, I'm not surprised of some of my gifts. But also, I think just being a woman and the calling as Azer Penegdo for women, um, there's a conflict that happens when, you know, especially our culture has kind of, and you alluded to this a while ago, our culture has, um, has, we've even taught from the pulpits of our churches, what I will be so bold as to call a false teaching mm. um, that has been at enmity with the design God has of a woman, but also it's an enmity with the design that God has for man. We 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 hear this battle that is in our culture, and you know I'm going to go here, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't. I never know how much I'm going to go. So bless you guys. Stick with me. But our culture, we hear, you know, we have the feminists that people are that are they are so afraid. You know, they're saying feminists are just militant against men. And then we have patriarchists, you know, men who are steeped in patriarchy, who are against the women. And you, you see these as extremes, but then you see a lot of things flowing in between, especially in the church. In fact, I, you know, in my studies, one of the things that has grieved me the most is the influence of patriarchy and feminism and um, into the church, causing... A, a misinterpretation causing redefinitions of womanhood, manhood, marriage, family, parenting, mission, ministry, all of this package. Um, and, and I don't think it's by accident. I believe this is a ploy of the enemy. I think this is a strategy of Satan that he has had at this time because if he can silence half the church, then half the church is not fulfilling the Great Commission. Amen. If he creates the division, the lack of unity, a hierarchy, a, a hierarchical, um, institutionalized consumer mentality that, that we have so often in the church, then you get it down to maybe half a percentage are actually fulfilling their calling for the Great Commission. So this is enmity from, from the enemy. It's a strategy from the enemy that's taking place. But nothing to me is more at risk than marriage. And think about, you know, I think about like my view of marriage. I remember reading the Bible and, and having a vision and saying, God, I really want this for myself. I really want this. And, and yet not being able to experience it in my own relationships. And, and Larry has the, the parallel story of the same thing, having a vision and not being able to get there. And, and one of the things I feel like that God is doing in our ministry, which is part of why we got online today, our marriage in particular, he's, he's first been, he's been working in each of us individually, but then the bringing us together, nothing short of us both going, it's a wow, it's a God thing. We, it 100% percent if we could go more like 200 percent we know this was a god thing yes. that this was a god calling this was a god covenant that he was willing to make between both of us to do the things that we can do together with our gifts the way that our gifts come together and flow together with the way our messages i'll tell you guys the first conversation i had with this cutie pie I was like, oh my goodness, we will be best friends forever, remember? <laughs> and, and, and part of 
it was because our messages were so intertwined. I didn't know what that meant for God. I was actually in denial. I was actually so surrendered to singleness that I was not even considering a relationship like male, female marriage, you know, marriage thing. But it was kind of interesting. I remember thinking, wow, did this dude just say something about God's design? Did he just talk about identity? That's one of my points in my dissertation. I need, I was taking notes talking on the phone for our first conversation. And he wowed me, which scared me because I remember saying to God, God, if, if you have a guy out there, you want me to be married, you're going to have to send a guy that's going to wow me, who is going to make me want more of you than I could have on my own, that he's going to be, that, that we can really be in a oneness. And the picture, and I shared this with Larry, um, was of being able to run a three-legged race together. That means you have to be in step together. You have to be going the same direction. One can't go faster than the other. One sure can't lag behind from the other. You have to be in step at the same pace, moving forward to the same goal. And, and yet here, and this is where I'm going to go with the vision that God gave me for what Larry was talking about a few minutes ago. I feel like he, he gave this description of where we had to go on the journey, on the path, that I had tried to go around it, this, this thing of the things that I was most afraid of. I had tried to go around it so many times, and I couldn't get around it. It was too big. And Larry was so gracious. He said, Cindy, I know that this is scary for you, but you don't have to do this by yourself. We are doing this together. And I'll, if it takes step by step by step, we do this step by step by step. We're going to do this together. But we're going through. We're going through. the, the And G, God's going to help us get through this. And, and to me, the most beautiful thing is it kind of gives me that picture. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie or read the book, um, Pilgrim's Progress. That's the vision I had of the journey that he had, that God was calling us to be on together. And, and the path that, that our, I feel like our paths had, had come together for such a time as this. And so um, getting to that spot of both of us, because my fears actually hit his fears. Mm -hmm. That's where he got off the path before. That's where I got off the path before. And we didn't want to go through this tough spot. But yet God said, oh, yes, you will. And I've got you. I've got both of you but also us being able to have each other walking through it. There's a beautiful oneness of that. Amen. And that's, that's what God has called us into in relationships, whether it is the marriage or whether it is in the body of Christ, whether it is us ministering to those of you. you aren't in journey. We are not on journey by ourselves. We are created to not be alone on this journey. Some relationships, like the marriage relationship, is much more intimate. It is, there are things that, that, that Larry can know, that I can know, that no one else can know, that this is our thing. There are things we are doing with each other that you don't do outside of marriage with, with that kind of an intimacy in the relationship. He is the one God has called to go the full distance with me to everything that God has for me. Yes. Same for Amen. him. Amen. Same for him. But then we're not alone even with brothers and sisters in Christ or with our children. We we all are on journey together, spurring one another on, bringing correction, bringing edification, bringing instruction. All of those things are things that we do together. We're not out here having to be by ourselves. We can do this thing together. And so that kind of brings us, unless you want something else to add to it, mm. to what God is calling us to do. It's kind of cool. <laughs> well, the reality is, and I want to I go back, and as you were saying that, we kind of go back to that Romans 8 and 28. Yeah. Because that's a favorite scripture for people mm -hmm. to quote. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, you know. That's another favorite scripture, but Romans 8 and 28. For well, I know that all things will work together for the good of those, that God's working things together for your good. Mm -hmm. Come on. You know, and what we have to truly understand is that God is working things together 
so that we can shine forth the goodness of the Father in our lives. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that men may see your good works. Mm -hmm. Why? So that you should be exalted? No, so that your Father in heaven would be glorified. Yes. And so the reality is, is that God is working things together so that we can stand in the fullness of what he's called us into because it's according to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Yes. What is his purpose? To reflect the image of God, to reflect agape love. Mm -hmm. So God is working these things together so that mm -hmm. we can walk in according to the purpose of his calling, which is to reflect agape. It's not so that I can go buy nice cars, <laughs> have a bank full of money, have a wonderful house on a mansion on a hill, you know, none of those things. Is it, is it wrong to have a nice car? Is it wrong to have money in the bank? Is it wrong to have a nice house? Absolutely not. Right. But if our intention and our perspective is so that God will bless me so that I can stand on a hill and say, look at me, then we're in the wrong place. Right. And so what, we, what I really want us to understand is that what is God working together for our good? What does that mean? It means so that we can walk in the fullness of the calling that God has called us to. Mm -hmm. And guys, as we go forward and we begin to develop and we begin to mold what we believe God is calling us together into, these are the things that we are going to address. We're going to put these things together to bring to you all and for you all to receive the fullness of what God has for you. You know where the church has failed, guys? Mm -hmm. Discipleship. Amen. Amen. Discipleship. Which is exactly our commission. Which is what God <laughs> has called us to do, is for me to disciple, for you right. to disciple. Right, right. Yeah, I wrote a post this morning. And, 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 pause. and that is not just some little cute little church Sunday school thing or a little mm -hmm. program. This mm -hmm. is this is called uh, this is this is about literally coming alongside of one another, helping each other to look and to be more like Christ. Amen. To be Christ followers for us to image him. And, and, and if there's a w area of our life that's not imaging him. For us to come alongside of one another and help the other to image him even better. So, you know, this is the call. This is the call. Coming alongside of one another, helping to make disciples. Yes. Amen. Who make disciples. Who, who make disciples. Who makes disciples. <laughs> and continues to reproduce each one after his own kind. Yes. Amen. So, guys, that's kind of where we wanted to go. You started to say something a second ago, and I kind of jumped in with a yeah. Romans 8 28. You were talking about, about where, where we're going. going. Mm -hmm. yes. Go ahead with that. Well, you know, for many years, those who have followed me have seen me write. I've, I've written over 156 books, and I've written thousands of articles, um, produced podcasts, and um, and classes and seminars and retreats and did a little bit of it all and you know it was kind of this little thing talking about going back 10 years ago going what do I do with this you know I knew that that season was definitely to an end you know of where I was at that place and so I've had kind of that 10 year sabbatical and um just really sitting at the feet of the Lord and letting him teach and heal and bring me to this place that we're now walking into together. Um, but, you know, when we were on our honeymoon, I think that, and, and by the way, we call this still on our honeymoon. We're in our hundred year honeymoon. <laughs> so, um, but when we were on our honeymoon, these were some of the discussions we had over meals and over coffee and over walking through beautiful Helen, Georgia. Um, riding through the mountains and you know what does this look like 
you know, I knew that I had only part of the vision, but that he had part of the vision and that together God was going to knit it together to give us a vision of where he wanted for us to go. And so um, I, I felt as we were, you know, we, at, you know, the big thing that I, I felt like we needed to make a decision of what was going to happen with, with um, past things. And what we, I mean, for either of us, because we were leaving and we were cleaving and becoming one. And that wasn't just in marriage, relationship, just us. It's also in everything we do, our families. It was in our ministries, our mission that God had chosen that this is the man who could go where I was going and that I'm the woman that can go where he's going. Amen. So we both have. We've both done ministry, pretty much all of our saved lives, you know. And so. <laughs> I, I remember I was telling Cindy, I said, I think I had my pampers on, wasn't even totally potty trained. And I was sitting in the factory with a group of guys, <laughs> uh, Stuart and Donnie and Robbie and, and a few other guys sitting there. And I was preaching my guts out to him. I had 20 minutes, you know, 30 minute lunchtime and, and about 20 minutes to just preach my gut out to these guys <laughs> and watch them and just preach to them, you know, trying to hold my pampers up, not letting them fall down and embarrass myself, you know? Oh, that's and, funny. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was just a young, young Christian mm -hmm. and, you know, preaching the word of the Lord, knowing that God had a calling on my life. Mm -hmm. And I've stood in the pulpits, and I've stood in, in the Sunday school classes, and I've stood on the one-on-ones in the streets, in the one-on-ones in, in, on my jobs, and, and my customers and whoever would listen to me <laughs> and teach them about the Word of the Lord and to teach them about the things of God and what God was doing in my life, you know, but never really seen the fullness uh, of what I believe God is doing in us and what he is moving and how he's moving in us. Mm -hmm. um, we can literally see uh, another horizon, mm -hmm. another place of, of beginnings, a new beginning, yes. a place of saying, okay, this is where God's taking us to. This isn't the end. Oh, It's the beginning. Yes. You know, and I said, how are we going to do all these things? The Lord's coming back. You know, we, he may be coming tomorrow. We, you know, but we're going to get busy doing the things he's calling us to do as if we're going to last for another hundred years. If we're going to last for another 30 years, another 40 years, whatever wow. God should tarry in our lives and allow us to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we're setting about to write the books that's, that, that he's placed in our hearts. We're set about birthing the children and the ministries that God has given to us. I have many spiritual children. We yeah. have many spiritual children Amen. that are looking to us and saying, how? What does God say? How do we do this? What do we need to do? We're in trouble. They've come to us. And so we have people looking at us. And so we need to teach. Mm -hmm. We need to direct, and that's where we're headed to, guys. And we're so thankful for those of you that have got to join us on this live. And I know we're going to post it to our Facebooks and to the YouTube channel. And so you guys will have access to go back and listen. Maybe there's something that we said tonight that will go, man, I need that. God help me. Father, help me to mm -hmm. grab a hold of this truth mm -hmm. and to get this truth and solidify it in my heart and in my spirit mm -hmm. so that I can begin to walk in this because I hear the truth in it. I recognize the truth. I, I, I recognize the lack. Mm -hmm. and, and it may very well be that you may say, wait, there was something you just said. I need more of that. Perfect. Perfect. That's where you say, hey, I need more of that. And that's exactly what we'll do. Exactly. You know, both of us have our day job, which I love how he puts this. Um, I said, I, 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 I work on fire alarms during the day to get a paycheck, but I do ministry for a living. Amen. 
You know, guys, every day I have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Today I had opportunity. This afternoon I had opportunity. As I'm on my jobs to be able to hear where somebody's at mm -hmm. and begin to speak the word of the Lord. Right. And bring refreshment, bring anointing, bring uh, something new to people who have been in church with all their lives and say, I've and never. And some Sunday. Some I've Sunday. Never, <laughs> I've never heard that. Yeah. Spoken like yeah. that. I've never seen the truth being spoken mm -hmm. in that manner. And it makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of the false religious ways. We were reading a book this morning uh, and, and listening to a, uh, a, a, a Bible study by uh, Christy McC McClellan. Mm -hmm. McClellan. And one of the things that she said in this this morning which was very impactful to me was we have the word of god mm -hmm. and the word of god is given to us not for us to read it to mm. just read it but to allow it to read us amen and the mindset of an orphan is we go and we say oh my god what can i get I gotta, I gotta hurry up and dig through here and get something because I'm starving and, and I'm hungry. That's an orphan's mentality. Mm -hmm. A son and a daughter lays back and lays back at the table and says, Father, I know you're gonna feed me. Yes. And so that mentality that she brought out in this, that westernized, Greco-Roman yeah. mentality that says, I'm building all of this, this great hall, this great castle, this great festivities, the big, wonderful churches for you to look at. Mm -hmm. Which is, what did she call that? Um, form versus function. Think about that. <laughs> we have a lot of form. We have a lot of beautiful things to look at, especially in the westernized world. Mm -hmm. But very little function for the kingdom of God and furthering the kingdom of God. Right. And God wants to create within us a place that we can function for the cause mm -hmm. of Christ. Yes. And that's what we're going for. We're going Thank for Thank you, Christy, for this great book. <laughs> Um, rediscovering Israel, a fresh look at God's story and its historical and cultural context. Uh, you guys, I, I, I was telling Larry about her because I love her study on um, gospel on the ground and she's got Jesus and women. And you talk about some good studies. Yeah. I fully endorse them. I love every time she teaches. I have... I, I, every time I've even gone back over the things that I have of hers, I get more every single this morning. Yeah. I got more. Oh man, it's beautiful. It's just, just great. What, I, I think we got like three minutes, yes. and I thought, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. <laughs> this is so good. Yes. This is so good, and I got just out of that three minutes. I probably got a day's worth of feeding that I ate on today. Yes. A full meal. That's you know, God's so, word. Yes. That's God's word. And that's how God wants yes. us interacting with him as his sons and his daughters. And get that beloved identity, getting a hold of what it means that our identity is found in him. Our purpose is found in him. Our relationships are in him. Yes. That our, It's in him that I live and move and yes. have my very being. Our very being. Yeah, our so. very being. So you guys... And, and the words of my beloved here, buckle up. Buttercup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we're in it. We're in it to go for everything and grasp onto everything Christ died to give us. And I just have a feeling that that's exactly what some of you are wanting as well. Well, that is what our heart is. That's what we're grasping on for. That's what we're going for. And you guys, I just am so thankful that so many of you are going to be going with us. You're going to be part of this journey with us. Who knows? Who knows what God has got in store for you and for um, his calling that he has in your life. But I don't think it's an accident that we're all linked up with one another in this journey. And that we 
um, the things that God has put on our hearts in particular to come alongside of each of you. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's an accident. It's not just a coincidence. No. It's it's literally part of the beautiful plan that he has for all of us. Amen. Amen. So guys, we love you. Yes, much. <laughs> we love you. Um we to close this out in prayer. Mm. So mm. Father, we come into your presence and we just pause. Mm. We stop. We thank you, Father. First and foremost, that we know your name. That we know to call upon you. That we know that we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yes. That it is because of him that we have the ability to be in your presence freely, God. Mm -hmm. And to know God that you are here to help us walk through whatever we face in this life. We know, Father, that you want us to allow you to help us to walk through the very thoughts and the intents of our hearts, not trusting what we rely on, what we have found um, trustworthy within our own ways, well, you know, it got me through last time, and I skated through this the time before that. But God, knowing, Father, that it is truly in you that we live. It's yes. truly in you, God, that we trust. It's truly in you, God, that we find life and life more abundantly. God, we love you. And I pray for each and every one that would hear this video that would hear our sharing our hearts and would grab a hold of a truth and yearn to go further with you mm -hmm. yearn to give you that throne within their hearts to say father i'm done trying to do this on my own i give it to you and god we thank you for it all in jesus name amen amen all right, guys, we will see you on the next go-round. Yes, yes, see you later.